Now, our next guest is the former U.S. ambassador to Australia and a friend of Obama, Jeffrey Blush. He has valuable insights to share with us about the competition that's shaping up for the U.S. presidential election next year. He joins me now from Sydney, where he's working at the U.S. Studies Centre. Jeffrey Blush, uh, good morning. Nice to uh, spend some time with you today. Uh, good morning, Virginia. It's nice to connect with you again. I've missed you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Look, before we get to discussing um, the presidential campaign, which is going to be probably one of the longest ones in history, it seems to me, yeah. with this early, the early nominations we're seeing. Can I just get some quick responses for you on Australia today, sending more troops to Iraq to combat Islamic State? Um, in your view, as someone who's watched this closely, is the joint, Nash, is the joint military strategy working now? Um, well, uh, again, I'm an ex-excellency now, yes. but I have been involved in the White House Summit on Countering Violent Extremism, and I do see a turning of the tide. Uh, you know, there was a development of ISIL uh, that was faster than expected, more rapid than expected. America acknowledged that, but uh, the U.S. and our allies are all um, going back to the root of the problem, which is ensuring that we have a properly trained Iraqi force, and that's part of what Australia has been doing here, and at the same time recognizing what are the techniques of ISIL to recruit uh, terrorists and, and, and obviously Sydney and Australia have had a very direct, in, uh, uh, direct view of uh, the recruiting techniques and, and the dangers associated with those uh, and so we're trying to get it at the cause uh, uh, out there in Iraq and Syria but also identifying how on social media we can protect ourselves from uh, homegrown and, uh, and self-radicalized terror terrorists. I think what might be uh, making some people a bit despondent, myself especially, is that when I read reports as I did recently from the New York Times from uh, US soldiers going back to Iraq after you know le leaving there and finding the, the local army there in a, in a parlous state when it came to their skills and their abilities, that their, that their skills had fallen away they were nowhere near as well trained as they were when, when they formally left I Iraq. Th that's disappointing and, and surely sets back the entire cause. Well, I can't comment on, on individual soldiers' experiences. I think the general view was that um, the, uh, the, the army did not hold together as well because there was a sense that there was a um, shared opportunity for both uh, Shia and Sunni, and as a result, there had been a fall-off and some desertions. Uh, I think part of the training mission, part of the efforts that are being done now is to reverse that trend and, and uh, I, I think we're on a much more hopeful course right now. And is the U.S. role large enough in your view? Well, again, I'm, it's not my role to talk about U.S. policy anymore, except uh, uh, based on the information that I have, it seems as though we've got the calibration about right. Now, as a Democrat, are you happy to see Hillary nominate? Oh, as, uh, as a you know, former uh, ambassador and someone who worked closely with Hillary, I'm delighted that she's running. But she's an extraordinarily talented person, and I think she'd be a great president. So uh, very happy to see people of that caliber putting up their hand and saying that they want to um, lead us after the, President Obama's term ends. She's an extremely divisive figure, even while she's um, very, very well known and popular among some groups. Uh, as someone who supports her, what fears or anxieties do you have about the campaign that's going to be run against her by the Republicans? Oh, you know, there are no new anxieties, you know, the... <laughs> but, but it will the, be extremely rough, it's fair to, to suggest it that, It will be it? extremely rough. This will be a very, very tough campaign for everyone who's involved in it. Uh, if you just look at the metrics uh, in 2008, which was a very, very hard-fought campaign, uh, about three quarters of a billion dollars was spent by the end of the campaign by the two parties. This time they're predicting three to four billion because of some new uh, rulings relating to campaign finance. And so over the next 19 months, if you've got three to four billion dollars to spend, um, there, there are really no holds barred on the kinds of messaging, the kinds of attacks, the, mm. the kinds of, you know, just onslaught that, that you're likely to see against the candidates who are involved. On the other hand, um, you know, anyone who puts their hand up knows what they're getting into and is ready to, to deal with it. And if there's anyone who's, <laughs> who's developed uh, uh, a suit of armor and a certain amount of resilience uh, in the ability to uh, move through the flak and keep moving towards the, uh, towards the goal, it's, uh, it's Hillary Clinton. Yeah, it's, it's not a thick skin. As you say, it's a suit of armor. It would have to be. What about friendly fire, though? C can she expect some heat from other uh, ambitious Democrat candidates? Well, I think it's normal for there to be a competition in a, in a primary, and so I wouldn't assume that there won't be any, any competitors. I know there are some people, Governor Martin O'Malley, who was in Maryland, um, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, a New Englander, there, there are some who've already 
uh, indicated that they have a real interest in running. Jim Webb, former senator from uh, Virginia. Uh, there are others who I think may stay in the background just in the event that there is a, um, a significant event that changes the, the course of the, uh, the primary. So Elizabeth Warren might fall in that category. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone knows exactly what Vice President Biden uh, will or won't do. Uh, so there are, there, there are um, people circling, but I think it's fair to say that uh, uh, Secretary Clinton is, um, is a clear front runner in the, in the Democratic side, uh, which, which gives her an advantage yeah. because I don't know if there are clear front runners on the other side. And the most uh, likely uh, Republican then, if there are no clear front runners, who do you think it might end up being? I think the Republican Party has a very, very challenging time ahead. You know, right now you have three first-term senators all associated with the Tea Party who have announced and are ready to, you know, ready to move forward. Uh, the next round of announcements will probably come from what people would call the establishment candidates, you know, Jeb Bush, Lindsey Graham, Chris Christie type folks. Um, I think there will be a pitched battle between them. I think the Tea Party folks will want to, you know, take down their advantage take down the advantages of the establishment folks. And then there's a whole group that's kind of in between, sort of Scott Walker, uh, Rick Perry, others who have governed, uh, our governors, who um, are uh, appealing to the Tea Party, uh, but who the establishment might be able to live with. And so uh, all I can say is, you know, get a bucket of popcorn and, uh, and sit back. This is going to be very entertaining. <laughs> well, uh, only for U.S. presidency nerds like uh, you, me and Michael and maybe, <laughs> maybe a few others. Um, what would either presidency mean for Australia, in your view? Oh, I think that the, the relationship between the United States and Australia is so strong that it has um, uh, gone, gone, really gone from strength to strength regardless of who's in the White House and, and, and also who's in the Lodge. Uh, and, and so I wouldn't expect that there would be any significant change in the U.S.-Australia relationship uh, regardless of, of who's elected. I do think that, um, in fact, when I, when I look back on uh, the time since I've left, uh, there's been a change in government here in Australia and I haven't really seen any dramatic shifts in, uh, in the progress that we've been making together. Well, Jeffrey Blige, nice to see that you just find it impossible to leave Australia and good to talk to you this morning. <laughs> yes, I've gone native. Uh, I look forward to seeing you the next time. Good to hear. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> and uh, Jeffrey's in Australia as a visiting professor with the U.S. Studies Centre and always welcome on the program. And as always, great fun. So great to hear from him again. Now